Jeffrey Dahmer reacting to a life sentence. Hold on tight and brace yourselves for the most spine-chilling true crime drama of the year. Netflix's Dharma Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. From the twisted minds of Ryan Murphy and Ian Brennan, the creative duo behind the series Glee and Scream Queens, comes a bone-chilling ten-part series dives deep into the disturbed mind of one of the most notorious serial killers in history, Jeffrey Dahmer. For over a decade, Jeffrey Dahmer unleashed his reign of terror upon the nation, leaving a trail of unspeakable crimes that shook the very foundation of society. His victims were innocent young men lured into his clutches with promises of companionship and friendship. But what they encountered instead was a nightmare beyond imagination, one of torture, murder, and the darkest of human perversions. This gripping series takes a unique and chilling approach, telling the story from the perspective of Dharma's victims. It delves deep into the twisted psyche of a man who, for years, managed to evade detection and continue his gruesome reign of terror. Through harrowing accounts and interviews with those who knew him, the series brings to light the unimaginable horrors that Dharma inflicted upon his victims. Be prepared to witness a true monster at work. A man who showed no remorse for his heinous crimes and whose depravity knew no bounds. The series will leave you with goosebumps and keep you on the edge of your seat as you witness the shocking and disturbing events that unfolded over the course of 13 long years. Let us first do a quick recap. Who was Jeffrey Dahmer? Jeffrey Dahmer, some called him the devil, while others saw him as a timid boy next door. But don't be fooled by his unassuming appearance. Behind the facade was a calculating and cold-blooded murderer who preyed on innocent victims without a shred of empathy. Before he became known as the Milwaukee Monster, Jeffrey was just a strange and unsettling boy from Wisconsin. Born to Lionel and Joyce Dahmer on May the 21st, 1960, he exhibited sadistic tendencies from a young age. In a haunting interview with CNN, Dahmer's father revealed how his son would dissect animals for his own twisted amusement. It was a warning sign of the darkness that would eventually consume him. Unbelievably, Jeffrey Dahmer's twisted charm earned him a level of popularity in school. As the class clown, he delighted in playing outrageous pranks, including pretending to have seizures and fits, which quickly gained him a cult following. His fans even referred to themselves as the Dharma fan club. Little did they know that this seemingly harmless boy would go on to become one of the most notorious killers in history, leaving his former school friends in a state of disbelief. On the night of his 18th birthday, most teenagers celebrate with friends and family. But for Jeffrey Dahmer, it was a different story. He had something far more sinister. Mr. Plant. On June the 18th, 1978, Dharma lured hitchhiker Stephen Hicks to his home, where he bludgeoned him to death with a sledgehammer. Dharma's chilling response to police questioning was, he wanted to leave and I didn't want him to leave. This was only the beginning of a string of violent crimes that would leave a lasting legacy of fear. Dharma's crimes are infamous for their gruesome and horrifying nature. An AP report from 1992 revealed the extent of Dharma's depravity after his murders. He went to extreme lengths to preserve his victims' corpses, including performing lobotomies on them by drilling holes in their heads and pouring in hydrochloric acid. Dahmer even injected muriatic acid into some of his victims while they were still alive to try and keep them under his control. But perhaps the most shocking revelation of Dahmer's crimes was his confession to cannibalism. He admitted to preserving a man's heart so that he could later eat it. In his twisted mind, Dahmer believed that dismembering his victims and photographing them in various poses would somehow preserve them. He was quoted as saying, if I couldn't keep them there with me whole, at least I could keep their skeletons. When police investigated his apartment, they found a collection of disturbing Polaroids that revealed the extent of his depravity. As they delved deeper, they discovered a fridge containing jars filled with male genitalia and other body parts. The unspeakable levels of evil and madness that Jeffrey Dahmer embodied cannot be fully described with words. His heinous acts shook America to the core and left the court struggling to comprehend. When Dahmer faced the music and received his life sentence, it was clear that justice had been served. The police discovered numerous boxes of body parts, evidence of his psychopathic mass murder. Shockingly, it's believed that he may have been responsible for as many as 17 murders. Even now, 30 years later, his actions continue to astound and baffle people, as seen in the new Netflix series Dharma Monster, The Jeffrey Dahmer Story. When Dharma addressed the court after receiving his life sentence, 
It was clear the courts were not equipped to handle the depths of his evil. Dharma seemed relieved, stated that he'd never sought freedom and that he wanted death for himself. His words were a chilling reminder of the horror that he had inflicted upon his victims. Jeffrey Dahmer, the notorious serial killer, was sentenced to life in prison in Wisconsin, where death penalty was not an option. In his court appearance, Dahmer made a surprising revelation. He claimed that he did not commit his gruesome crimes out of hate and that he believed he was sick or possibly even evil. After being diagnosed with paraphilia substance use disorder and schizotypal personality disorder, he finally found some peace. Dharma hoped that by making his sickness known, others with similar disorders could receive help before they hurt themselves or others. He felt that the trial was a way to bring awareness to this issue and potentially prevent further tragedies. Drinking was Dharma's key to unlocking his darkest desires. According to forensic psychologist Dr. Park Dietz, Dharma's heavy alcohol consumption was not only a way to overcome his inhibitions, but also a sign of his sanity. Without alcohol, he couldn't carry out his twisted fantasies, indicating that he knew what he was doing and that it was wrong. Despite pleading insanity, the court ruled that Dharma was sane during his killings. He finally had to own up to his actions and the harm he caused, admitting that no matter what he did, he couldn't undo this terrible harm he had inflicted. After showing some remorse for his heinous actions, Dharma brought up the topic of money. His unspeakable crimes had made national headlines and he was actually set to make some profit from the attention. However, he expressed a desire for any money earned to go to the victim's families, offering a bizarre form of compensation. In addition to apologizing to the families, he also expressed remorse for hurting the judge in his earlier case who had tried to help him. These multiple murders were not Dharma's first brush with the law. He'd previously been arrested for sexually assaulting a teenage boy named Samsak Synthesomphone. According to reports, Dharma had convinced the 13-year-old to follow him to his apartment to take in a nude photo shoot in exchange for money. Dharma was eventually convicted of sexually assaulting the boy. Dharma had written a letter of regret to the judge, which resulted in him being sentenced to only 10 months in prison instead of the intended eight years. However, his early release on probation proved to be a grave mistake, as he resumed luring teenage boys to his apartment. One of his victims, a naked and bruised Asian boy named Conorak Synthesomphone, was found wandering the streets, but the police, assuming him to be Dharma's boyfriend, returned him to Dharma. Tragically, Dharma killed him later that night. It's worth noting that Conorak was the younger brother of the person whom Dharma was on probation for assaulting earlier. Despite the severity of the situation, Dharma remained emotionally detached, much like he had during his previous court appearances. This was in July 1991, shortly after his arrest. Dharma went on to apologize to the police officers involved, saying that he regretted causing them to lose their jobs in the Conorak matter. However, this remorse seemed to be the extent of his emotional reaction to his horrific actions. Despite more victims being discovered and charged against him, Dharma maintained his expressionless face, leaving the media perplexed and the voices of the victims unheard. However, at the final trial, the victims' families finally had their chance to confront Dharma and tell him how they felt. Grief-stricken, they held their peace until the day of sentencing. The judge delivered the final verdict. The court will impose a mandatory life sentence plus an additional 10 years on the habitual criminality. Count two, life imprisonment, plus 10 years consecutive to count one. Dharma was sentenced to 957 years behind bars, which meant he would only be freed in the year 2949. The judge couldn't help but express how horrifying the case had been for him as well. The judge made a comment about horror movies, stating that he turns them off and nobody has the right to ask him how he feels about them. He then said something profound about the tragic situation, acknowledging what had been done couldn't be undone. The judge expressed his wish to have a magic button that could put things back in place, but he recognized that he didn't have the power to bring people back to life, which was ultimately in the hands of someone else. The Aftermath of Jeffrey Dahmer In a twist of karma, Jeffrey Dahmer was violently murdered in prison after serving only two years of his life sentence. On May the 1st, 1992, he was transferred to the Columbia Correctional Institute in Portland, Wisconsin, where he was bludgeoned to death during a scuffle 
hospital with fellow inmate Christopher Scarva. The news of Dharma's death received mixed reactions from the families of his victims, with some expressing satisfaction, while others felt that his death was too easily compared to suffering he'd inflicted upon their loved ones. There was no happy ending to this story, as Dharma's brutal departure from this world was fitting for one of the world's most cold-hearted killers. Thank you for watching, and please check out more stories from the world of crime by clicking on the videos in front of you.